Yeah, good morning everyone. Um, I'm happy to say that our session on, on MSP research is one of the largest that we have today. We will have most of the presentations compared to all the other uh, sessions. Um, the, the good thing is uh, that, of course, then this means researchers have something to say. Um, if I look into the room, I would say our audience is still enlarged a little bit. Uh, so we, we need to work on getting the message, message through. Um, this morning we will be pretty relaxed. So for all speakers, we will have 15 minutes for all of you uh, to talk. I um, would like to ask you to use the microphone then, just for, for the video, so that this works. The same procedure as yesterday, I've got these yellow and red cards. Uh, two months left, and I will show you the yellow card. Um, together with the red card, I would take out the power flap, possibly. Um, and, um, well, the, the first talks will deal mainly with integration, interaction, uh, big buzzwords when we talk about marine spatial planning. Considering an old opinion of one of the professors, I'm not pretty sure whether this is really planning as it is understood in theory, but I guess in practice it's very important. So, Robert, please. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here to attend this extremely important and interesting conference dealing with the future. And uh, just to start with, the background for my presentation is the project GAP2, which is about bridging the gap between science, stakeholders, and the policy. The Baltic case study is about the integration of fisheries into the processes of uh, the maritime spatial, spatial planning. But uh, uh, my presentation is about uh, a couple of general things related to any kind and type of maritime spatial planning. And that's why uh, we skip the gap to description and go directly to the science. S some people say that concerning the science, most important is from the very beginning to make the theory right. Because it's nothing more practical than a good theory. If theory is right, it's automatically very, very much practical. So, and what science we need, this is transdisciplinary research. And uh, transdisciplinarity research, it is very close to what we know under the name of post-normal science, where societally relevant problem field is uncertain. It's usually so for the maritime special planning. Concrete nature of problems is disputed. Of course, we are part of that. <coughs> and a great deal at stake. We need to decide and consequences are not clear. So, and one very important thing is science policy interface and the, let's say, ordinary classical approach is uh, concerning that based on belief in a clear distinction between objective knowledge and subjective values and presumes politically neutral scientists speak truth to the power 
and providing objective representations of reality and so on. And it has been working for a long time for rather simple, not that complex situations. But the context of marine special planning, according to recent studies, tends to be complex, uncertain, and controversial. And it cannot be adequately addressed based on work done uh, under the linear science policy interface. And it is believed that the way forward is more participatory and collaborative science policy interface. Then, very important thing is co-production of science and policy uh, based on understanding that there is no policy and no science, you know, um, just uh, by the themselves, but but both of them are interwind, interconnected, and according to Yasanov, co-production is the simultaneous pr production of knowledge and social order, even very general. It means that we need to think about co-production. How to do it? Answer mutual learning. And also very important thing, and we are talking very much nowadays about adaptation in, uh, in relation to many uh, things, and it is believed that transdisciplinarity aspires to make the change from research for society to research with society. We mentioned that for many times already yesterday. While the mutual learning can be conceived as the adaptation process. It's a process, adaptation, inherent in interaction and joint problem solving between science and society. So, now, uh, how we do that? Learning from ongoing planning. And here is, uh, we have uh, two ongoing plannings, real plannings in Estonia. It is the Perno County uh, Maritime Marine Area. And uh, how this uh, planning or can be visualized at that very moment. And here are the planned wind parks. They are moving a little bit this and that. Yesterday we mentioned military. Here is the military area, no problem. And uh, here are the fisheries uh, and a lot of different things. So almost the same picture is with our Hima Island Hiyu County Maritime Special Planning, also wind parks, also military, also all these things, where the wind is, where the uh, different uh, resources are located. So, and what is missing? It is still the classical approach. We are going to allocate the space for different human activities, uh, keeping in mind the e ecological, environmental constraints. But uh, we are not talking about jobs, value, and sustainability in new meaning environmental, social, and economic at the same time. This is much more complexity in that. And if we look at blue growth, it is defined as smart, sustainable, and inclusive economic and employment growth. It is not 
It is not the, the fish growing, it's not the mussel growing, it is economic and employment growth from the ocean seas and, and coasts. And this is still missing in our Estonian real planning, but we have strong intention to bring it in as soon as possible. It means latest starting September. So it means that um, key objectives, sustainability, environmental, of course, it's the must. Nobody argue about that, but the objective is the jobs and value. It's, it's uh, anthropocentric. It's, it's uh, putting the people in the center of the planning, uh, provided that all environmental and other constraints are observed. No question. So, and conclusions. Keywords, transdisciplinarity from research to society. It is the classical way. It will continue, but we are changing to research with society. We are uh, based on understanding that science is societal activity. It is coming from society and results are going to society. Towards collaborative science policy interface, I would say that in Estonian case, it's extremely, I'm extremely happy to say that, that our government, our ministries, county government, and the stakeholders, they all nicely collaborate because uh, it is a good example of interest-based, all they are, have own interest, interest-based uh, collaborative uh, negotiation. Then, participatory processes based on the mutual learning. It is the adaptation process. We are coming first time together, having very different understanding on the issue, on the interests, and then uh, through this adaptation process, mutual learning, we are getting to the common ground. And towards planning for the blue growth, jobs, value, and sustainability. If now, classically, we allocate, we do the zoning and everything, but n there is no jobs, value, and sustainability in new new sustainability, new normality, I would say, uh, involved. This is the avenue for scientific research. A lot of social science here, a lot of biology, ecology. Uh, yesterday, it was said that we should protect <coughs> ecosystem services. Ecosystem services, of course, should be protected, but they they are sustainably used because what we really use from ecosystem is the services. Sustainable use means automatically what we mean protection. So, and that's it from my side just to introduce um, the, the setting setting the scene for the social scene for the maritime special planning, which is, uh, if this scene is, setting is right, we believe that results will be much better. Thank you very much. Or marine special planning, maybe it's also setting the scene for science, as this was already hard stuff early in the morning, I would say, uh, just as science sometimes can be. But obviously you attracted a few more people than we had in the beginning, so that was not so bad. 
Um, do we have questions? We have a couple of time now for, for questions. Or was this just too complex? Thousands of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Robert. Um, I have, I think, two questions. Um, for one, um, where is complexity here? And why do scientists talk about complexity? Uh, they, want, they should make things easy for us as planners and human beings. The other um, thing you were talking about uh, is, is uh, involving society. <coughs> so where, uh, where do you see the uh, collective questioning coming from? Because we have planners, they look at the topic. We have scientists, they look at the topic. So how, do, how does society perceive what's going on there? And do they really feel that there's anything they should be involved with? So how do you narrow down what question is there that everybody uh, is interested in? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, about complexity. If we starting with the data, this is essential, important, and very complex. Then. If we're moving, if our science is moving step by step forward, we give the interpretation of the data. We contextualize the data. And this is, in a way, reducing uh, complexity for the users, for the planners. We step by step, but, but you know, uh, giving interpretation, it's very much about the interests behind interpretation, because the same data, the same information can be interpreted. And that's, the, the planning process is the negotiating, negotiation process, as we say that in, in, in maritime special planning, like in life, we get not what we deserve, we get what we negotiate. And this is the reality. And coming to negotiation, this <clears throat> initial complexity is uh, more and more concentrated into the negotiation uh, argumentation, arguments. It means that this is, uh, is the way, could be the way and is, is the way how initial scientific complexity is, uh, is uh, concentrated, concentrating later on into the arguments, interest-based arguments for the negotiation. So your second question was about uh, how, how, how to reach the society. A uh, very general uh, answer could be through the interest. It means that uh, the maritime special planning should be presented through the, through the process uh, as much as possible as a uh, you know, balance of different interests. And then this way, more and more members of society are involved because they are, their interest is their personal and group interest. And finally, if we come back to this blue growth, most of us are interested in jobs and value. This is uh, maybe uh, coming very important areas to involve the people if we are going to talk about how we are planning the future from the point of view of blue growth, jobs and value. This is what almost all of us citizens uh, are very much interested in. Thank you. Thank you for this really interesting presentation. 
Um, I found it is specifically interesting what you said about blue growth. And um, I keep thinking about yesterday when we heard a couple of times that um, the need for MSP arises from nature conservation mainly. And now for me this somehow scientifically, scientifically thinking doesn't really fit together because um, if MSP is about blue growth and this is not about growing fish, as you put it, and on the other hand, nature conservation is about growing fish, um, yeah, this somehow doesn't fit. And my question to you is, is there scientific evidence that MSP is necessarily about blue growth? Or could it alternatively be about nature conservation? Or could it be both? So, uh, thank you very much for that question. It's an it's, uh, absolute perfect question. And the three objectives of blue growth are perfectly answering your question. Because the third objective, a uh, sustainability, new sustainability, environmental, social, and economic. And the uh, connection between growth of fish and growth of jobs and is that the jobs, fishers' jobs, are using fish resources. And if, we, if they need, we need, we as the society need growth of the jobs in this sector, they are interested to protect fish stocks or to even to allow the stocks to grow. It means that, that the new reality, new normality is that fishers are the key environmentalists will be because their jobs and their business in based on flourishing resources <coughs> and only they invest, they need the return and and this is, we have seen in Estonia already uh, very promising signs because our fishers in this uh, Pernu area, they uh, started uh, to think about essential fish habitats. They are not only for quotas, they are for the nice and clean coastal zone, spawning grounds for herring, everything for that. It means that, it means that answer is, that this blue growth is bringing together uh, all interest because only jobs and value can be created only based on very, very flourishing uh, resource base. Thank you. Well, this was a pretty nice statement, I guess. Case. Well, Robert, uh, I, I have a case for you, because you're right, uh, Blue Coat is much about jobs, but it's quite often to find uh, good data and make good prediction on jobs, and when you do research on it, it's, it tends to get very uh, different interpretations. I have, uh, for instance, we, we had a big discussion in the Netherlands about wind farms, how close can they come to shore? And how will that affect the jobs in the recreation area? Yeah, there are lots of jobs in the recreation area. People go to beaches all the time. So we tried to do uh, some research on it and it showed some, some uh, significant result. But stakeholders said, well, you are under predicting and they started doing their own results. And on the same time, economists say, well, this is only a local effect because people who are going to do recreation Instead of going to this beach, they will go to another beach or they will go to another recreation area, which means the jobs you lose here will be gained somewhere else. So you get into a very uh, uh, interesting debate. And you, you have any ideas of how to make this kind of debate more manageable? Want to give an answer? Yep. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, very general answer, very general, is it is a question of social choice. 
whatever that means for different societies, different, uh, you know, specific situations. But uh, finally, it is, the, it is not the choice of uh, some civil servants or, or, or stakeholder, one of the stakeholders. It is so called social choice. And to organize the environment for social choice to be workable, this is one of the uh, objectives of the governance. Government, governance. It means that answer is social choice in very general terms. In different societies will, would uh, choose different approaches, different norms, different things to the same type of the situation. Of course, but uh, government is aided when uh, people agree about uh, these data. And you see it's, it's very hard to get a, a shared uh, consensus on, on, on these kinds of uh, efforts. Right. And uh, I would say that uh, that good example is, is uh, spreading quickly. When uh, in Pernu region, uh, local people discussed uh, how far the plant uh, wind parks could be. Many, many times was mentioned that Dutch example, uh, was it free, uh, clean horizon and uh, something like that. But then they said that maybe we could uh, allow them closer. It means that social choice, they have been more, I would say, more collaborative in this. Thank you. I have the strong feeling that we might come back to this point later again, even more than twice, possibly. Robert, many thanks.